Hi, I'm Deborah Molwuka. I am so delighted that you've dropped by to watch this full hour of gentle somatic yoga. Perhaps not quite so gentle as it usually is, because we're trying to uh, put minerals back into your bones and help prevent osteoporosis. So much of what we're doing is to stress the, the bones. I really hope you enjoy the session. If you do, please, please leave a comment below. If you don't, that's perfectly fine. I can take it. Leave me a comment about what would work better for you. If you'd like to join our select online community, drop me a line down below or visit the website that's going to be in the description. Watch it through to the end because I've got some similar videos and next week we'll be covering more about joints and bone safety. Joint mobility routine. Lie on your back, knees bent and hip width apart and begin to tilt your pelvis forward and back. Use your feet to press into to have the back of your waist come down and touch the floor. Without moving them, gently pull your feet to roll into an anterior tilt. Notice what happens to your head and neck as you do this. You're warming up your low back but also your cervical spine and your neck now. Bring one knee to your chest and have one leg long along the mat. Squeeze that knee into your chest. If your knee can't tolerate an acute angle, hold underneath the knee instead of over the top of the shin. See if you can get the long thigh down onto the mat so that you can feel the front of the hip opening out and the psoas muscle lengthening. Feel the stretch across your backside on the knee that's coming towards you. Inhale, exhale and switch legs. These movements are all about keeping our joints subtle. Re-elasticating stuck fascia and connective tissue is all about creating flexibility and increasing the range of movement in the joints as a result. Think about your spine, pelvis and hips. Then bend both knees again and tilt the pelvis a couple more times, thinking about the spine as, a jo as joints in terms of the vertebrae, which are all trying to get to, you're trying to get them to move individually and freely. So go smoothly and concentrate on the feeling of your back on the floor. Then when you're ready, squeeze knees to chest, roll from side to side and massage the spine. Then gently roll onto your left hand side. Without tipping forward and back, turn your head to look as far behind you as you can. So keep warming up just the cervical spine or your neck without moving the rest of your body. Just the head and the neck are isolated at the moment. When you're ready, place your hand on the tip of your shoulder and lift your elbow up by your ear. Now bring it forward towards your feet and lengthen the shoulder away from your ear, feeling length coming into the side of your neck. Point the elbow forwards and back, rolling the shoulder in its socket. Then take backwards shoulder circles. Now let go of your shoulder but keep your arm bent, the elbow tucked in at your waist. Try to keep the elbow still and move your wrist from side to side. Try different positions with your hands. You can turn over the long lower arm bones. Begin to move the whole of your wrist, hand and lower arm bone, warming up the rotator cuff muscles at the shoulder which are responsible for internal and external rotation of the arms. Sometimes we think that if a joint is stiff or painful, we take this as a sign that the body wants to protect it and keep it still. It's true that we need to warm the joints up properly, so before we begin to use and move them, we need to do these kinds of movements. But we need to guard against wrapping the joints up in so much cotton wool that we're keeping it overly still because you risk the connective tissue surrounding it becoming more inelastic and moving less. Remember, motion is the lotion, as they say, when it comes to arthritic and painful joints. Keep the shoulder still now and bend and straighten the arm. 
notice the stopping point where the notch of your elbow fits into its position. Now let's warm up your upper back. Bring the arm straight in front of you and make sure your pillow is sticking out behind your head and not in front of your face. Then take your arm back behind you at shoulder height, not windmilling it above your head yet, just bringing it forwards and backwards slowly a few times, bringing your awareness to your upper back mobility, gradually increasing in its range of movement every time you twist your upper back. As you come forward next time, reach as far as you possibly can beyond the hand that's the other hand. And on your back movement, do the same thing, reaching and feeling the thoracic spine begin to loosen and move further. Now let's take the arm in a windmill motion, drawing a huge backward circle and listening for any clunks and cracks in the joint. Slow down and notice for points of sensory motor amnesia where you are unable to keep the movement smooth and slow or where you may even feel there's no sensation whatsoever in the action. Let your head come naturally with you as you warm up the neck, shoulders and upper back. Although it goes against our instinct to move a restricted and painful joint, inactivity makes arthritic joints much worse and increases the pain. Moving in the way you are now is keeping the functionality of the muscles and other surrounding tissues, keeping the synovial fluid production thin. It's the thickening of synovial fluid that causes swelling and pain. Right now you're bringing nutrients to the joint and reducing pain. The cartilage wearing out may be beyond your control. It might be down to genetics or too much repetitive strain on a joint over our lifetime. But because the cartilage is worn down and the synovial fluid becomes thickened, it doesn't mean that we can't reverse that trend. And doing somatic movements in particular where you are becoming introspective, that means going inside yourself and becoming aware of how the joint is moving, is the very best way you can safely help your joints. Now bend the knee and swing it in front of you. Give it a squeeze into your chest then send it backwards. Still with the leg bent, feeling the weight of it in your hip joint. Notice any grinding, clicking or clunking. Keep swinging the knee slowly forwards and back, becoming aware of your hip joint. Don't forget your joints are stiffer in the cold and in the mornings. One of the best investments you can make for yoga is a thick carpet, rug or mat to help them warm as you do your practice and to try not to sit in the same posture for too long. They need warmth to be able to be supple, which is the reason why we build up to more strenuous activity in our sessions over time, warming up the muscles and particularly the joints before we do more impactful activities. It's why we always start with gentle exercises, often laying down, and why we take this time to avoid bringing cold into the joints. That's why we ask you to bring a blanket to the sessions for, your, for the um, relaxation at the end. Bring the knee up to the ceiling and take hold of it under the thigh. Bend and straighten the leg there. Listen for clicks and crepitas at the knee joint. Keep the thigh still. You are just bending and straightening at the knee, warming up the knee joint. Remember that losing five pounds can make a massive difference to the friction of this knee joint. For every pound we put on in weight, the knee takes three pounds of extra pressure on the joint. So you can affect its function hugely if you're a little overweight. Now let's bring our focus once more to the hip joint and circle the leg. Again, feeling for big clunks and other sensations. It's our culture that makes us think that arthritis is inevitable with age. We call it wear and tear but it's because we don't exercise like the ones you are doing now that our joints become stiffened and the range of movement decreases things like the thinning of the synovial fluid the shrinkage of shrinkage of the connective tissues and the reduction of water content in the tendons plus the hormonal influences of course which reduce bone mineral density and the reduction of shrink of shrunken muscle fibers and the thickening of fascia oh my goodness it's not good news is it <laughs> But it is really because we can, these things are not a result of age, they are a result of age, but we have an awful lot that we can do about this. 
There is no need to lose your movement. Once more I say to you, motion is the lotion. Now let's look at the ankles and the feet. Keep your hand hooked under the thigh, or if that's uncomfortable, if you can just simply bring your top leg down onto the bottom leg. Point and flex your foot. Rotate it. Listen for clicks, crunches and noises in the joint. If it, as it's circling, is there any part of the circle that it skips? Maybe it's doing a square. This really helps to free it. These noises are actually very helpful. Now point and flex your foot again. Then stop and spread your toes. Now rotate it once more. Release your leg and roll yourself gently onto your back and compare the two sides of your body. One has its joints, which have been moved through their full range of movement. The other side doesn't. So what is going on for you right now in this body? What difference do you notice one side to the other? What's jumping out at you now about how much you need this kind of movement in your life? When you're ready, roll onto your right hand side. And we'll begin this whole movement pattern again. It's a very useful one to do on a daily basis. It cannot bring any harm to you whatsoever. And you are going through every joint of your body and putting it through its full range of movement to increase the synovial fluid. First of all, without tipping forward and back, turn your head to look as far as you can. Keep warming up this cervical spine without moving the rest of your body. Just the head and the neck are isolated in the movement. Place your hand on the tip of your shoulder and lift the elbow up by your ear. Now bring it down towards your feet and lengthen the shoulder away from the ear. Point the elbow forwards and back, rolling the shoulder in its socket. Then take backwards shoulder circles. Let go of the shoulder but keep your arm bent, elbow tucked in at your waist. Move your wrist from side to side, still with the elbow tucked in. Try different positions with your hands. You are turning the lower arm bones and warming up the rotator cuff muscles in the shoulder. Remember that a joint that is stiff and painful isn't a sign that you must keep it very still and wrap it up in lots of cotton wool. These gentle movements will help. Remember, no motion is the lotion when it comes to arthritic and painful joints. Keep the shoulder still now and bend and straighten the arm, noticing this notch where the elbow can't go any further back. Now let's warm up your upper back. Bring the arm straight in front of you and make sure your pillow is sticking out behind your head. If you want, you can put it on top of the underneath hand. Take the arm back behind you at shoulder height, not windmilling it above your head. Bring it forward and backwards slowly a few times over your shoulders. Bring your awareness into your upper back mobility, which you're gradually increasing every time you tip backwards. Next time you come forward, stretch out as far as you possibly can beyond your underneath hand. And on the backward movement, do the same. Reach as far as you can, feeling the thoracic spine beginning to loosen and move further. Now take the arm in a windmill motion drawing huge backward circles and listening for any clunks and cracks in the joint. Slow down. Notice for points of sensory motor amnesia where you are unable to feel the movement at all perhaps or it's not as smooth as you want it to be. Let your head come naturally with you as you warm up the neck, shoulders and upper back. Although it goes against our instincts to move a restricted and painful joint, remember, inactivity makes arthritic joints worse. Moving in the way you are now is keeping the functionality of the muscles and other surrounding tissues. Just think, I am thinning my synovial fluid and increasing the amount of it, bringing nutrients to the joint and reducing my pain. You may not be able to reduce the cartilage that's worn, which again could be quite beyond your control. Maybe that you've actually been very fit and sporty in your life. And the, this kind of repetitive action has caused the cartilage to become worn down. 
but you can affect the amount of pain involved because you can affect how much synovial fluid is present. You can affect the elasticity of your connective tissues and the way the fascia moves so that your muscles slide rather than jerk and get stuck. Now bend the knee, swing it in front of you, give it a squeeze into your chest, then send it back behind you with the leg bent. Feel the weight of it in your hip joint. Notice any grinding, clicking or crunk, clunking. Keep swinging the knee slowly forwards and back, becoming aware of your hip joints. Your joints are stiffer in the cold and in the morning. So it's very advisable if you're exercising in the morning to make sure you take the joints through a full range of movement before you do any impactful activity. Start with gentle activities. That's why we always do things laying down and we bring blankets to the sessions for the end. Remember to pace yourself through the day. So if you're doing gardening, try not to do it all day long. Have breaks for teacups of drinks and whatnot. Now bring the knee up to the ceiling and take hold of it under the thigh. Bend and straighten the leg there. Listen for clicks and crepitus at the knee joint. Keep the knee still though, you're just bending and straightening it at the, the leg at the knee so that you can warm up the knee joint. Again, just let me reiterate that for every pound you put on in weight, the knee takes three pounds of extra pressure onto the joint. So the kindest and biggest difference that you could make to the knee joint is losing weight. Now let's bring our focus once more to the hip joint and circle the leg. Again, feeling for big clunks and other sensations. It's our culture that makes us think that arthritis is inevitable with age. Of course, we're calling it wear and tear, so it makes it sound like that. But it's because we don't exercise enough that our joints become stiff and our range of movement decreases. Everything you are doing now is helping to counterbalance the things that you can't control, things like the hormones. You're helping the muscles to be able to glide more easily. You're helping yourself come unstuck. Now let's bring our attention to the ankle and foot. Hook your hand under the thigh again or bring your top leg onto your bottom leg. Point and flex the feet. Rotate the foot. Again, listen for clunks, crunches, clicks, noises. This really helps to free it. Those noises are actually very healthy. Now point and flex your foot again, then stop and spread the toes and then rotate it. Now release your leg and roll yourself gently onto your back and compare the two sides of your body. Now that you've done this work of mobilizing all the joints on both sides of the body, how do you feel? Seal with flippers pose. You need a cushion, a block. If you have one, a bolster is very comfortable, but it's not absolutely necessary. You can make do and mend with cushions. Lie on your tummy with your arms crossed and prop yourself up on your elbows very slightly. This is a deep compression of the spine. It's very therapeutic for slipped or bulging discs between the vertebrae and excellent for the treatment of sciatica. The technique has been adopted by yin yoga specialists from a physiotherapist technique called the McKenzie method and has been very successful with treating acute low back pain. It's also very helpful for those patients with subacute and chronic back pain. But of course, your body belongs to you and only you know how far you can push it. 
So take your time to come to your own edge, ignoring everything that I'm saying if it's not working for your body. Just go as far as you can today without being competitive with yourself. You can let your head dangle, the back of your neck becoming long, or if it's comfortable you can lift your head slightly and close your eyes. Your legs can be narrow or wide. Focus on the back curve and any slight compression you can feel there. This may be enough for you today. But if you want a challenge, you can put a bolster underneath your armpits or a pile of cushions under your elbows so that the softness will support your bones, which can bring, you can bring toward your chest and bring the top half of your body higher. Another option which will bring further traction into your low back is to lengthen your arms away from you and prop yourself up on straight arms. pushing slightly into the ground which will transfer pressure into your low back but that may be too strong for you today in which case support your head in your hands or place it on a yoga brick Feel the compression in your low back and your sacrum. You may even get a sense of the sacroiliac joints. You can prop yourself up with blocks or bricks under your elbows or put your elbows on a bolster. Get comfortable in whichever option suits you in terms of propping yourself up and remain as still as you can. Coming in and out of the pose multiple times isn't advisable because it's like bending a credit card which will eventually snap. So once you've found your edge, just hold that position until the elasticity has returned to your connective tissues enough to allow you to challenge yourself on the further back bend. Are your buttocks engaged? It doesn't matter if they are, it won't affect how compressed the spine is in this position. However, if you can release them, do so, just because your muscles will get very tired, because we're going to be in this pose quite a long time. Clench the fist and allow your index finger to pop out from the fist. Then the next finger. The next. Notice the fourth finger wants to pull out with the little finger. Then out comes the baby finger. Clench both fists again and let's try it the other way around. With the pinky finger coming out first, then the fourth finger, the third, the second. Which way was easiest? Now turn your hands down and splay the fingers. Dip your index finger down as if you're sticking into a small pot of sauce. Keep the other fingers passive. Now bring your index finger up and dip the third finger. 
Other fingers are staying still. Now the fourth finger. Oh, is it moving? The other fingers. Lastly, the pinky finger. Which one was hardest to do? Now try that once more from the other end. Little finger reaches down into the pot and takes a bow. Did any of the other fingers move? Now fourth finger, third finger and index finger. Which was the easiest way round? Now take your right hand and use your left hand to bend it backwards at the wrist, pushing your flat hand away from you. Switch hands. Now bring your hands into backwards prayer and press the hands together. Lastly make a fist again, then flick your fingers into a splayed position. Grip and flick, grip and flick. Now I've distracted you from the deep compression in your low back, we can begin to tip the head backwards. But if this normally makes you feel nauseous when you're lying on your back, tip your head forward. Either way, the tipping of the head forward or back will stimulate the thyroid gland. Now if your hamstrings aren't too tight, you can try bending the knees and bringing the feet towards the buttocks. Now that the fascia in your back has eased, let the arms come out, turning the hands out to the side, removing all the blocks and bricks and bolsters and straighten your arms. Now you look like a proper seal, hence the name of the pose, the seal pose. I've added the flipper bit because we've been playing with our flippers. This is now making compression very strong in your low back. You can lock your arms out and that creates stress in the connective tissue of the arms which will help them to get strong and healthy. Remember that stressing the connective tissue allows the fascia, which is like the outer covering of an orange segment, and it's covering all the cells that the body has, to begin to slide smoothly over adjacent fascia, allowing things to slide smoothly. The reason why a dexter bone scan is of your wrists, hip and spine is that they are the areas that present with brittle bones disease, osteoporosis. Well, the first part of it will be osteopenia. Remember, traction is good. Right now you're putting stress through all three of your bones and encouraging three of those bones that they would take pictures of at the dexter scan and encouraging new bone growth. I am living proof that it's perfectly possible to reverse a very serious osteoporosis. I was told I would be in a wheelchair by the time I was 35, but I've done it entirely, naturally and drug without drugs. Walk your hands towards your hips now to increase the compression in your arms and low back. The deep connective tissues are also getting stronger and healthier through this pose. 
See if you can get your hands a millimeter closer to you now to make sure to make the curve of your back even stronger. Don't worry if your shoulders come up by your ears, you can gently look to your right and left to ease your neck. You might experiment a bit with the arm positions. It's actually stronger to have your arms further forward, which takes you lower, but it gives you the opportunity to push into the ground to increase the spinal compression in your low back. Notice how your stomach feels. Is it very stretched out in this position? Take your time to come out of the pose now, gradually creeping your arms away from you and lowering yourself down on your elbows again. Turn your head to one side and place your cheek on your hands, sliding the same side knee up, which will release and lengthen your low back. Rest completely. You deserve it. Lie on your right hand side with your knees tucked up a little. Breathing naturally, feeling the side ribs lifting out space between the intercostal muscles. Stretch your bottom leg long now and roll onto your belly with your left leg out to the side. Lay your forehead on top of your hands, elbows out to the side. Your left leg can have the heel kicked in or kicked out. Inhale. On the exhale, draw your left elbow down towards your knee. Lift your right elbow up towards the top of your mat. Pause here, feeling the right side of you is long. Soften the body, the jaw, the deep centre of you, the aspect of you that feels you have to hold it all together all of the time. Soften your belly into the earth. Inhale. Exhale and uncoil back to the centre and pause again. Inhale. Exhale, then side bend to the right. Your left elbow reaches up to the top of the mat. Inhale. Exhale and come back to centre. Lower the left leg down to meet the right. Rest. If you wish, take an inhale. And then on the exhale, push up into a small cobra. Arching the back, squeezing the shoulder blades and lifting the chin. Then inhale, exhale and come back down.
Gently roll onto your left hand side and tuck your knees up. Inhale, exhale and stretch your bottom leg long. Roll onto your belly with your right leg out to the side. Lay your forehead on top of your hands, elbows out to the side. Your right leg can have the heel kicked in or out, it's up to you. Inhale. Exhale and draw the right elbow down towards your knee and the left elbow up towards the top of the mat. Pause here, feeling the left side of you is really long. Soften your belly. Breathe into the back body, feeling the expansion of the ribcage and the lungs. Maximising the oxygen uptake to your tissues. Letting go. Inhale. Exhale and uncoil back to the centre and pause once more. Then inhale. Exhale and side bend to the left. Right elbow reaches to the top of the mat. Inhale, exhale and come back to centre. Lower your right leg down to meet the left. Inhale and on the exhale take a small back bend. Up into cobra, lifting chest and chin. Feeling both sides of the body long. Inhale, exhale and lower. Then curl up into a ball on whichever side suits you best and rest completely, a pillow under your head for support. Shoulder stand or Sarvangasana against the wall. Please use caution if you have thoracic or spinal, cervical spine injury. This is a movement that will release your low back in a very effective way. You need a wall and a blanket or a pile of blankets or a rug. Fold the blankets into rectangles so they are wide enough for your shoulders and elbows. Line up the blankets so they are a torso's length away from the wall, so that when you are lying with your bottom on the wall, the top of the blanket will be in line with the top of your shoulders. Sit sideways against the wall and lean back on your blanket, flicking your legs up the wall. Bring your bottom as near to the wall as possible. You'll probably have to fiddle around to get nearer to the wall by scooching your bottom closer to it. Your neck should not be on your blanket, only the shoulders. Otherwise you'll be doing a neck stand and not a shoulder stand. This is a good way to keep your neck safe. You may just want to stay here with your legs up against the wall and you'll be getting some very great benefits from being in an inverted posture like this. Inhale, exhale and if you want the challenge bend your knees. Notice how it feels with your knees in this position close up to your armpits. You are in Malanasana or deep squat, but lying down. 
If you struggle with that pose, you'll be able to see whether you could do it easily if your knees were not in the equation, which is the usual reason for not being able to achieve the pose as we get older. Inhale, exhale and gently squeeze the shoulder blades together to activate the thoracic spine. Bend your arms and have your hands point up towards the ceiling, elbows tucked in to your side. Then inhale, exhale and push your feet into the wall and at the same time push your elbows which will push, in, push your hips up very efficiently. In this position you might need to wiggle onto your blankets a bit more if, there aren't, if they aren't quite in the right position and from here you can press your hands into the low back if you want to help your hips go up higher. So you can walk your feet up the wall a little bit higher then wriggle from side to side to get your shoulders close together. Keep your hands on the back of your waist and give yourself some safety and support. If you like, you could try interlinking the fingers and having the arms long along the mat or the blanket if you prefer. Keep your head and neck and face relaxed. Check they are off the floor and your shoulders are on the blankets. It's perfectly fine to stay here the whole time in this inversion, which is giving your heart a rest from having to pump blood down to your feet and up towards the heart again against gravity. You can push your hips further forward if your neck is okay and bring yourself into full shoulder stand if you want to challenge yourself. The back is long, your tummy muscles engaged. You can experiment with different leg positions and feet positions and you can put one leg on the wall and one leg off if you want. If you love plough pose, you can even bend your knees and take your feet over your head. However, you might want to stay with your legs up high if you prefer to keep yourself calm and relaxed, especially if you have a bigger tum like mine, as it gets very squishy with the legs overhead and therefore is a far less tranquil pose, even though many of us are in a great deal of hurry to get into plough. When you're ready, slowly bring your feet back to the wall. Release your hands and very, very slowly inch your spine towards the ground.
And lay there with your arms comfortably wide and feeling the lovely length in the spine. To come out, bring your legs to the side in the same way as you came into the pose, with a pillow under your head, staying there for a few breaths. Bring yourself into your chosen relaxation position today, one that your body is specifically asking for in this moment. Be fussy about the props you need, like a nice cushion uh, to put under your head, and be kind to yourself by putting on socks and surrounding yourself with soft, warm things. Take your time to get yourself settled now. Then bring your awareness to your breath. We're going to spend a few moments using bellows breath, which is known as Bastrika, and is said to be good for depression. Most of us have had a depressive thought or two over this pandemic, and at times it feels like there is so much monotony, sadness, and even worse, tragedy for those who have lost loved ones, that it would be inhuman if we didn't have compassion for those who have suffered and if we didn't experience negative emotions as a result, it would be surprising. So one of my first rules of getting over depression is to stop telling yourself off as feeling low. I simply love this bellows breath practice because it reminds me of my beloved doggies. Basically, I would describe this breath as panting like a dog. You're going to take small but forceful breaths, as if you are cat snatching at your breath. It can change, you can change up how much breath you snatch in and out and speed up to really quite a fast pant for fun. Try it now. Make an inhale and an exhale, short and forceful. Keep your mouth closed and start slowly then try different speeds. Allow the belly to be soft so that it dances with the breath, just like an animal would. It kind of sounds like this. If you can, 
Make a fist with your hands, tucking your thumbs in, and this helps you feel grounded as you pant. Keep panting as I talk. You often see dogs doing this little panting breath in their sleep, and when they're playing, and overexcited as well. And if it's hot, of course they are doing it to cool themselves down. What it does to us is give us a feeling of mild elation, totally drug-free. This is because we awaken the sympathetic nervous system whilst we practice the light panting breath. But afterwards, parasympathetic ner the parasympathetic nervous system takes over and our blood pressure and resting heart rate drop considerably and we experience feelings of deep relaxation. Bring the practice to a close now. And if you had your hands in a fist, spread the fingers wide. Feel the stretching across your palm and all of your hand. Then soften it and let it rest naturally and softly where it's, where it's comfortable on your body or on the floor on the arm of your chair. Imagine for a moment that you are walking with a dear friend, perhaps a furry one or two in tow, around a beautiful lake. It's very mild weather at the end of summer in the late afternoon and the sun is streaming on the water, the sky a deep blue. The lake is surrounded by beautiful trees which often arch over the pathway and provide a shady walk. The two of you are chatting happily, dressed in summer gear with bare brown arms. And you're enjoying a very gentle breeze around your neck, keeping you cool and calm. You feel surprisingly happy given the simplicity of your experience, just walking, talking and taking in the views. You really have a sense of love and feel so supported by this person that you're with. They're very important to you. Every now and then there are little shelter huts which have been made for people who are fishing at the, at the lake. The two of you stop at the odd one for little rests and play with the animals and feed the swans that are floating elegantly by. As you wind your way around the lake together, you are suddenly surprised by a tiny spot of rain landing right on the end of your nose. It makes you laugh and you both speed up and head rapidly for one of the fishing shelters as you plonk yourselves down, laughing and breathing heavily from your dash, the heavens suddenly open as predicted. It's really quite an extraordinary experience as it's so warm and the sun is still out. The rain is suddenly hyperactive and begins to bounce off the path in front of you and make jumping patterns on the lake. The swans have gathered together in families under branches that overhang the lake and sit prettily in huddles. The two of you simply huddle together, even though it's still warm, and you laugh with gratitude for your shelter, since the rain is keeping you dry and the sound of the rain bouncing off the roof reminds you of your childhood holidays, tents, caravans and cottages, when in your youth the sound of the rain beating down was utterly magical. Perhaps you were colouring indoors, or you were watching TV, or playing games as a family. So this rain accompanied much joy. The rain and the sun gather up forces now and produce the most brilliant rainbow across the other side of the lake. You both sit in silence and stare in wonderment, as it seems as though you're the only two who have the privilege of seeing it. There's no one else about. The smell of the wood in the shelter the freshness of the rain, 
and the beauty of the sight in front of you are intoxicating to the two of you. And you just watch and take in the scene as a couple of ducks pass by enjoying the weather and carting with them a family of tiny, pretty, delicate little ducklings who follow eagerly behind their parents, none of them affected by the pouring rain. Just as soon as it has started, the rainstorm is over and the rainbow becomes more and more faint in the sky beyond the horizon now. As you peer out of your shelter to check the sky, and all seems bright, no sign of more rain, you continue on your journey perfectly dry, along your way watching families of swans sailing calmly now along the water. The whole atmosphere has been given a fresh sense of liveliness. All the grass is so bright green and the leaves just seem as if they've just come into bud. It's as if a button has been pressed and the air has been cleansed just for the two of you. Everything even smells green and new. It's as if the earth was begging for a drink. And she is very satisfied at last. Without speaking, just linked arm in arm, the two of you complete your journey, both taking in the atmosphere of peace with a hint of mystery and a bewitching sense of joy coming from deep within you. You know that everything is going to be okay. You know that you are lucky to be alive on this day, to have the gift of loving friendship to be able to experience nature as she force as a force of power on you, on you, healing you in this beautiful way you know deep within that you are living your life well and that you are loved and wanted all is well you are safe and sound there will always be shelter for you when you need it even at short notice you are protected and you are chosen to be here on this earth right now. When you're ready, draw your awareness into the room again. Focus on your breathing for a few moments, making it stronger, a little deeper. Take time to begin to stretch your body out wriggling your toes and fingers, moving your joints, working your way in towards the heart. Possibly, if you like it, bringing knees into chest and rolling on your back, and perhaps rolling onto your side if you like to snuggle up there for a few moments. When you're ready, bring yourself up into seating. And to you, my dearest friends, who make me feel safe, loved and wanted every day, Anatomist Day 